Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with the amazing Sarah Simmons, and I'm so excited that you're on my program today, I have to say. So hello, how are you? Hey, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Well, good. I, I, I am going to tell you that um, I am I am a secret fangirl. No, I'm not a secret. It's not a secret. I am a total fangirl for you, and watch, <laughs> watching you on season four of The Voice, that is my most favorite season by far. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty incredible. It's definitely a long period of your life. Mm-hmm. People don't know it, but it is eight and a half months. Exactly. But it was good. Exactly. It was good. <laughs> I, and, and I wanted to ask you about that because, you know, there's this secret fantasy that I have where I've wanted to participate on the show Big Brother. And no way. Oh, I totally have wanted to do that show for such a long time. And and I know that my parents would not be happy if I did. But right. But it's one of and I know I can't do it at any point soon because I have kids. But that's just one of those things that I've always had that secret fantasy about. But what is it really like? Because it really I, I mean, I imagine that there's gotta be a lot of struggle there being sequestered in a hotel. Well, the struggle at the beginning is you're, like, sequestered. You can't like, talk or see your family for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that's, like, kind of the emotional part. But other than that, I mean, um, you know, everybody gets along. Because you're so close-knit, the people that are, excuse me saying this, but, like, kind of conceited or have an ego, like, those people usually go real quick. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, And um, it, it really becomes a family. And, I mean, I've really made... Like Judith Hill, she's become one of my. She's going to be one of my bridesmaids, and Regina Alvarez. Oh, how fun! <laughs> they were both in my. You know, they were both in my um, season, and right. I became really close friends with them, which is so crazy. But it's like you know, when you're yeah sequestered for eight and a half months in a hotel, it's like if you don't become close to those people, there's something wrong with you. Right, right. <laughs> you know? like, yeah, because everybody like when somebody leaves, we all just cry. You know, because oh yeah. It's like a, you know, I don't want to say weird competition, but it can be weird. You know, it's like we're competing, you know, it's, yes. it's like that's weird, you know what I mean? Yes. And, um, but we see it as every single person on that stage, like most of every single person is very talented. And, right. you know, and it, the voice is really cool, but it's people think when they audition that it's going to make or break them, but it's really just an experience. It's not your career. Exactly. And a lot of people think that, Mm -hmm. you know, and so that's why any time I ever get asked, like, if you were to try out for The Voice, what's your number one advice? That's my number one advice is, you know, no, it's an experience. It's not your career. So everything that you've worked up up until then is still important. And afterwards, is even just, you know, just the beginning, you know, because it for sure opens incredible doors but um and it has for me but you know it's it's being balanced with it for sure and knowing right. you know there's positive and negative to it yes it's a reality show but positive you know right. you made a bunch of friends and it opens a lot of doors so it's Overall, a good experience. Absolutely. And I'm, and I'm so glad you touched on, on friendships because I wanted to ask you, you know, um, I, I've interviewed the Swan Brothers, and I remember watching their audition. Really? And I remember oh. thinking, I will be front row at one of their concerts, mark my words. And my kids were like, Mom, what? And I was like, watch these guys. And we would every single week. We'd watch them, and we'd, you know, we'd cheer. And, and you know, and, and for you, oh, my gosh, you have such a powerful, amazing voice. And we we just we couldn't get enough. It was just our favorite season of, of all time. Oh, so yeah. much talent during season four. And I know that there's talent every season, obviously, but it was right. so – you, I mean, there was so much talent, and I really, I, I was so sad when when we saw you go. I was like, no, what, what did America do? Yeah. Like, no. You know what? Though it's like one, I love Zach and Colton so much. Oh yeah, they're like the biggest two followers on the planet. Um, but then secondly, you know, it's like actually, it's better for you to not win. So like, I don't want to say this at all because I know it sounds bad, but you know it. Sometimes a lot of people say that the winners don't do well and the people that after that do. Right. And and sometimes that can happen, but also right. sometimes the winners can just carry into a part of American Idol. Jennifer Hudson didn't win, but she was like top seven. Right. And Holly uh, Clarkson, you know. And um, but you know, I was top seven on The Voice, you know, and it's like right. it really doesn't matter 
where you were on it because it's really what you do after it exactly. that, that makes something. Because even the winner could just sit there, you know. Right. And right. But the one bad thing is, you know, they keep you under contract, the winner mm-hmm. and, the, you know, yourself. Like the winner and the voice is like, if you win, it's not that great because you, unless you're, if you're a writer, you don't want to win. You know what I mean? Because right. it's like they keep even the percentages of that. So, I mean, there's this pros and cons, though, you know. Right, right. Distribution is really good and things right. like that for sure. But you can do that independently just as you can with a label today. And exactly. That's, and that's, that's actually what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, and that and that's great. And that's, what I, that's, that's the other thing I want to talk about. You know, in Center Stage Magazine, we love – independent artists and we love focusing our attention on all of the other talent out there because you know radio to me and you know no no real offense to radio you know they're doing what they what they got to do right but it's so different than it was when i was a kid you know um i mean now it's like we just hear the same thing over and over every hour and it's like whoa there is so much more available Oh, there's so much amazing music out there, and it's so sad that not a lot of people can really hear it, you know? I mean, unless you have serious XM, like, you're not going to hear some really cool stuff. Or if you watch, um, what is it called? I think we're going to be on it soon. Um, Tiny Desk Concert. Like, things like that. Some of the most incredible artists, but, you know, it's... At least the people that know them love them, right. you know, right. and um, things like that. But, for example, it's like, to go back to the label thing, it's, it's like, really, you just have to surround yourself with a good team. It's, yes. Because if you have a good team, like, I have, I love the people that I work with. Like, I can't imagine anybody else. But mm-hmm. the person that really took care of it is this guy named John Strom, and he was in the band The Women Heads. He was the guitar player. Nice. <laughs> and they opened up for Nirvana and stuff. But he actually, well, he is like the leader of my team. Um, but before that was this film producer. He actually did, um, he was the film producer for Twilight and Nicholas Sparks movies. But he is called Temple Hill Entertainment. But they actually invested in the album. Oh, and, wow. um, and just big fans that I ended up paying my out, al- paying it back, and now I own the album. Right. So I'm getting to, which is, but I still work with them too. But, um, right. so it, you know, it was like even offered by some people that I said no, um, because doing it independently, if you can do it independently and your own, you're your own writer, right? Then you should do it. You know, Absolutely. that's probably the number one thing I tell, try to tell people. It's so scary and it's a lot of work, right. a lot of work, but it's. It's worth it. It's just, you know, it's like, you know, you're meant to do what you do. Right. And same with me. And same with, like, my sister is a nurse. And same with, um, you know, a doctor or a surgeon right. or a cop or a firefighter. It's like, you know, you're supposed to do something. So Absolutely. anything, what are they, what is that idiom that people say? I always forget it. <laughs> it's so easy, too. I know. You know um, what? I'm really bad at idiom. Anything in reward or mm-hmm. whatever. What is it? Someone help us. I know, right? Somebody um, needs to help us. Somebody just needs to write in, <laughs> comment in, and help us. <laughs> for sure. um, <laughs> no, but I no, and 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 I, and I get what you're saying. Everybody knows what we're saying. I, sure. I know, and and the thing is, is you know, career control <laughs> is huge. When you have control of your career, it's way more fun. And when you're doing a job that you love, and you know, it doesn't feel like work, oh, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, so many people end up on power trips and, you know, I've seen so many employees in so many different fields that they work their tail off, work their tail off and they're never recognized for anything good. But the minute they make a mistake, you know, it's just, they're looking at it. Oh my God, yeah. that's the truth. You know, and it's that's- like. That's the truth. I never even thought about it that way, but yeah. Yeah, so, you know, having career control and being happy and being able to make decisions and, you know, do things that you want to do and go in a direction that you want to do and not sell yourself, you know, out because this is what somebody else wants you to do and they're telling you you need to do it even though, you know, so you're compromising yourself and, you know, I I think independence is definitely the way to go, for sure. Right. Well, and it's done, another thing that people think is things happen overnight. They don't. No. I mean, St. Vincent is a perfect example. She um 
she like put her album, I think she made two more after, or maybe it was just an album, but it took her like 10 years to get where she is today. Right. And it like just even, yeah, like a really long time just to get recognition, right. you know, and, and, but, you know, it's, it's not even that. It's, it takes time for sure. And, and if you don't enjoy the time in the journey, then it's a waste of time. Right. You know? Absolutely. Like, we just got to, I can't believe it, but um, uh, we just got finished with a tour. We're about to leave in a couple of days, but um, we just got some tour opening up for this band called The White Buffalo. And um, he actually sang for all of the Sons of Anarchy, and that's where I met him, was I sang at the... Marcus Luttrell from the Lone Survivor movie. Um, he wrote the book. Incredible, incredible book. Incredible man, too. Oh, wow. With the Navy SEAL. He and the Sons of Anarchy do this thing every year called the Boot Ride Campaign. And it's where um, we just get our Marines and we support them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they just completely show support. They raise money. They do this huge bike ride with the Marines. Mm -hmm. And those that can't, they ride for them, you know, in their name. Like, so many things. It's so incredible, but... I got to sing the national anthem, and that was the first time I had ever um, heard, like, heard of the White Buffalo. And then, like, I'd heard of him for the soundtrack, but, like, met him and stuff. And um, then, you know, long story short, I've just always been a huge fan. He sounds like Eddie Vedder and Johnny Cash. Oh, wow. Time, you know? Wow. He's so good. If anybody's listening, go look up the White Buffalo. <laughs> right, for sure. Wow, that's great. The Eddie Vedder and Johnny so Cash. That's their child. Is the White <laughs> Buffalo. Yes, <laughs> he's so good. He's oh, so that's good. awesome. Oh, I'm gonna have to oh look him God, up now because now I'm like, okay, this is great. This is great. I, I, I definitely. But now we leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're leaving in um, a day. We're actually going. We're leaving on Thursday. Um, we, and our second music video, our first music video just came out in the first single, but our second single and music video before the album drops in August mm -hmm. is with actor Wes Booty, and he's that uh, Native American dude that was in Last of the Mohicans, Dances with Wolves, oh. Father and Avatar. Oh, wow. So that, okay. Yeah, that video is coming out in July. But we're actually, he got us this gig, which is so cool, y'all. It's all about connections. Right, right. It, it is. is. And I'm telling it you, really in Nashville, is. everybody seems to know everyone. And it's yeah. the, what I love, they it's, do. It's crazy. But, but it's crazy. basically, yeah, he, um, we're playing now for this award ceremony for Gary Lucchesi and James Cameron. And it's, oh, wow. Um, I've never played an award ceremony in my whole life. So this will be my first time. Oh, but wow. I'm really nervous. I'm nervous, guys. Yes, okay, but nervous. but you're so you don't fabulous. Nervous, don't be nervous. Normal. You're like you're like yeah. so good. You're such a natural on stage too. It just it, really? you're every one of your performances. I just Thank just sat there in my living room like, wow, she, you're just so good. You're so good. You're and your your range is absolutely phenomenal. I mean. I you. Your your style, you can change your style. It's just it's it's trippy to me. I'm not gonna. I don't even know. I don't. I don't have any great colorful words. It is just trippy to me because I'm like sitting there like, oh, how I did she trippy. do this? <laughs> you know, one minute you have this like beautiful, pure, angelic sound, and then you've got this gritty rock, powerful, like deep. And I'm like, how does she do this? <laughs> it's just. <laughs> And it's and I know I know the Shakira must have felt the same way because you know it, it was just like her and her and Adam they hit their button so fast for you and then it was um, it was Usher and, and Blake and then it was like once you hit that other part oh my God then they both hit their buttons at the same time it was like those two parts of your song and you got a four chair turn that's not that's that's because you're amazing so sorry oh. see Fangirl came out again sorry. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you. No, no. You seem amazing. Can you see? I would. I'm gonna totally go and listen to your show now. Well, <laughs> well, okay. There are some really fun ones from CMA Fest that are actually on video, but um, no way. Yeah, there, there are. There's one with. Um, there's one you have to see just because I lost. It was the very first time I've ever lost complete control of an interview, and it was with Halfway to Hazard. Keith Anderson and then Montgomery Gentry jumped in for a little bit. And I just stood there laughing the entire time. 
the entire time. But um, and on the same night, I, I I was actually really fortunate. I got to talk to Josh Kelly. And um, if, if you don't know, that's Charles Kelly's brother and Catherine Heigl's husband. Um, so, and he's... Oh, my gosh. Their friend, Catherine Heigl, is friends with Jake Smith from the White Buffalo and his wife, Casey Smith. See? See how everyone knows oh everyone? Oh, my God. Their... The world is so small. So, now, now you have to watch that video. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I, I absolutely... And she's... Catherine's one of my favorites, too. As far as actresses go, I've just always admired and adored her and and really looked up to her a lot. I just, I, I really, my, my kids love her, too. She just seems like one of those wholesome, sweet, and pure individuals that you just can't help but, you know, be captivated by. So, you know. Oh, yeah. She's one, she's beautiful. I, 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 she's really and beautiful she's soul, so sure. smart. And she's so talented. And, like, you know, seeing her knowing that she's done behind the scenes with directing and producing and stuff and, and seeing the end result is, is pretty great. Like in music videos, but in your music video, honey, I'm fine. Oh my gosh. That was such a deep <laughs> and emotional video. I, I just, <laughs> it like pulled at my heartstrings and I was in tears when I was watching it. So. Um, hey, thank you. No, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, um, gosh, I don't know. You know, I didn't want to act in the first one. Mm-hmm. I've never, you know, been in a dose since my first music video and actually was not going to act in it at all. And I'm at the very, very end. I was like, I'm going to quit in Tarantino and right. see it for five seconds. Right. You know? Right. But the second one coming out, I'm in the whole thing. And then West Judy is acting in the second part. Okay. Um, but that was a dream come true for sure. That's, but that's amazing. He, you know what's crazy? The only other music video he's ever done is with MC Hammer. <laughs> oh, my God. In the 80s. And I asked my son, I was like, hey, Wes, so, um, you know, have you ever been in any music videos? And he said, yes. But I said, which one? And, or how many or whatever? And he was like, I've only been in one. And he's so reserved, like the sweetest guy in the world, very reserved. <laughs> and he said, I've only been on one, but... Um, MC Hammer is the, is the only music video I've ever been in and I just freaked out and I was yeah. like no way it wasn't fun and he said he was the worst experience in the world and I was like oh no and I was like well is this the worst experience and he said Sarah this is one of the best experiences and it was so sweet oh that's awesome <laughs> oh that's nice awesome. yeah but but I just laughed so hard I went back and I watched the video oh my god so amazing that's <laughs> Funny. Now, I'm not, oh no, which, which which video funny. was it? Which one? Let me look. I'm like I, and see if he would have said that to me, I don't know. I probably would have gotten because I'm really silly. And if you ever meet me in person, oh my gosh, it's it's like a really good time. My my friends all say that we have moments when we're together <laughs> because crazy things happen all the time. So we just call them moments. But I'm I kid you, you not, I probably would have done the whole stupid stop hammer time as soon as he said that because I'm just such a <laughs> total idiot at times. <laughs> I think it's on this song where Tupac was on it. Wait a minute. Let me see. I know. I'm like, oh, I'm just I'm going to have to Google that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Google it. Oh, that's Wait awesome. G-Bone featuring, no. I right, you guys at home, you can Google this right now, too, and you can see exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> West Duty and MC Hammer. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's Make him jam. <laughs> <laughs> Now he's going to get mad because we're all promoting this and he says it's the worst experience and now we're getting everybody to look it up. I'm sorry, Wes. <laughs> sorry, Wes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. How 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 exciting, though. And what what amazing stories you have to you have to have with all of your friends and, and, and everybody. Like, it's just these are going to be memories that you have for, for, you know, the rest of your life that you just get to pass on. And how exciting yeah. is that? And you, Oh, my gosh. It's just it's exciting. It's, cool. it's emotional, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's really emotional, but it's like everybody gets sick. So, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. it does blow my mind though. Like when I the first time I saw when I heard I was opening up for West, I mean for uh, the White Buffalo. Like mm-hmm. I just such honor for me. I just you know a lot of musicians. He's kind of like a Chris Stapleton. Like right. he's everyone knows who he is in the industry side, but. Only if you live in the Northwest. I mean, everybody right. knows who he is, regardless. But I just, 
you know, he's one of those people that he could be even bigger than he is, right. like he should be, <laughs> of how insanely talented he is, you know? And, you know, when I heard I was, got to open up, I did the highest scream you'll ever hear. Oh. And I'm not going to impersonate it, but it was the highest scream you'll oh. ever hear. Oh, that's really I awesome. I was so excited. I, I love oh. that. And, and just hearing that you get excited, off too. That's bucket list. That was pretty incredible. Right. Sure. And, okay, so singing the national anthem, too, like, how did that go for you? Because that, it's such a difficult song to sing. And, uh, you know, my, my daughter just graduated junior high, right? And they did, I don't know why they do this at schools now, but they, like, actually make junior high kids, you know, eighth graders that are promoting into high school. They ha- they do these, like, actual graduation ceremonies where they're, like, in caps and gowns. It's the craziest thing. But, no way! Yes. Really? Yes. Wow. It's, we didn't get that when we were yeah, I didn't get that. It was like, okay, dress nice and, you know, your family. It's like a big family <laughs> at school, right? During school hours, That's no. So no, this was a it. full-on two-hour ceremony. They called each student by their names, 422 students, and I'm sitting there for two hours in the sun on Friday. Wow. Like, oh, gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> But but they had they had one of the young girls singing the national anthem and you know when you're in eighth grade your voice hasn't fully matured yet and this girl God love her man she belted out the national anthem and was it perfect was it no it wasn't that is a super difficult song to sing and she nailed it especially you know for her age her ability just blew me away and I was like wow here's another one on on the rise right I mean that's such a crazy yes. song. That's phenomenal. That's awesome. So, oh. so for for you, your yeah. experience with it, that. I for sure agree. It's for sure a hard song, but weirdly, I know this is sounds stupid. It's actually been an easy song for me. To get well, you have a ton of range too, it. so you can go really high. So yeah, I, I definitely could see that. But was it nerve wracking for at you? The same time, every time you sing it, though, it's not even that it's a hard, like, if you can hit some notes, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, it's not as hard as you think. It's really, the, for me, it's the emotion. Right. Like, I'm pretty emotional. I'm really, all oh, musicians are really intense, pretty emotional, right. boys and girls, but men and women, you know, but it's like, um, you know, like when I was singing in front of the Navy SEALs and Marcus Luttrell and all, like, you know, the Sons of Anarchy and those people, like, I mean... That was pretty intense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. You know, definitely. really feeling, but I had to really let myself feel what they felt. Because if you don't let yourself go there, you're just, it's like, why are you singing the song? You exactly. know? Exactly. You've got to sing it with your heart, you know? Right. But right. how can you not if you're not an American? Exactly, exactly. You know, and that's, but that too, to me, it's one of those songs that's completely intimidating because it's more musicians are judged based on their ability to sing that song versus any other thing out there. How many people have right. been judged for singing the national anthem? They got the words wrong. They didn't do this right. They didn't do that right. They, you know, it's like it's the most watched, judged song ever. And people can disagree with me. I don't care. But I mean, that's the one song that I recall every single year during sporting events or whatever that people are always scrutinized for their, for their, you know, their version rendition of it. So. Right. I remember really funny. Like, I love Steven Tyler more than anything, Mm -hmm. but it's like his rendition when he forgot the words. It was the best thing in the world. (laughs) Wasn't it him or no, it wasn't him. It was Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera. yeah. 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 Because Steven Tyler got it perfect. He just did Steven Tyler, you know? Right, right. <laughs> you know? Right, right. <laughs> oh, good. No, Christina heard that word. But I still loved it. I was like, hell yeah, keep going. Like, yeah, well, and you know what? And that's, you know? <laughs> that's props to her, right? I mean, you just keep going and doing And you know what? I mean, we all are human beings, and we all make mistakes, and we all get nervous. And, you know, we're all human. <laughs> And, yeah. and that's what I think a lot of people forget and a lot of fans forget. And when I, you know, and I'm just going to bring this up. And I know that Tommy, our, our co-founder is listening right now, but there was a performance. Oh, hey, Tommy. <laughs> there was a performance not too long ago with Nick Jonas playing a guitar solo. And he. Oh, that's really bad. Yeah. And no one. <laughs> 
no one let him live that down. I mean, it was all over social media and everything. And I was so like, you know what, guys, I feel you get up there and do that. You get up there and do that. And you all tell me how perfect you are. And I was so like, I posted on behalf of Nick because I was so like, enough of this. I'm done. People are just cruel, you know. And um, yeah, people are mean. You know, I don't, I don't get that part at all. So. Yeah, no, I. But, you know, there's just crazy people out there, you know, but. It was pretty awful. I felt for him. I know. Like, I know. My fiance is a guitar player and blows my mind. His name's Greg Langston. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. Um, but he's insane. But he plays slide guitar and just. Oh, wow. This really, he's tremendous, if that does anything. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, but it's like, you know, even Greg was like, oh my God, he had to like walk out of the room. He was like, oh, it's the best for that guy. I know. You know, I mean, it's awful. I know. I and then know. the girl actually is, her name's Kelsey, is what I'm saying, Kelsey Ballerini. Mm-hmm. I think, um, yeah, her age, old age in is mine. And she's my good friend, her name's Christy, but... It's just a small world. It's it like is. Mine. That you is, know? It, it, it really is. It really, really is. And it really is. I, you know, and I, I keep saying that, you know, I say it a lot during interviews too, but, but it's still, it amazes me because there are connections every single day when I'm talking to somebody from there and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know her? Oh, well, I'm friends with her. Like, you know, and it's just. Right. It, you probably know one of my friends in California because it says you're in California. Yes, I am. And I'm like, probably know who. Some of your friends are. <laughs> well, you know, so, I live in California for a bit too. I, well, and I was going to ask because I saw that you, you know, during your road trip from from California to Tennessee, that's where you wrote part of your new album, is while you were driving cross country. And so right. I, I was going to ask, you know, I mean, obviously you stayed here for the voice, you know, for for that for that time. But what right. what was your your biggest challenge, which go with going from you know California to Tennessee? Um, I really missed this stuff for a second, mm-hmm. you know, so I was, like, really excited to get out of the hotel room, you know? Right. But I love California, too. Actually, the first thing that happened was my godfather, Jeff, um, who sadly just passed away. I miss yeah. him so much. Jeff Cochran is his name. He's the best god daddy ever. But oh. um, he actually, they live in Orange County, not far from you guys. and. Right. Um, they picked me up, and I just went and hung out and drank margaritas. <laughs> oh, how fun. Did you go to Slurricane? I had their pina coladas in the pool with my, with my godparents and mm. my mom, and oh, it was fun. a good day. Fun. Yeah, but, but yeah, there's actually a little girl. She lives in Torrance. I uh-huh. don't think that's far from y'all. It's not far from me. Um, yeah, but her name actually is Sarah Simmons as well. Mm-hmm. And um, she, it's a long story, but there's this thing called Meg You Never Ever Give Up by yes. uh, Jesse Reeves. Yes. She's awesome. So a friend of mine from college, her name's Amy Goff, she went on there and she saw where this girl wrote. Uh, she said, my name's Sarah Simmons, and my biggest dream is to go on The Voice, is to go to The Voice and meet Adam Levine, but my bigger dream is to meet my idol Sarah Simmons and she sent it to me I read it and I cried oh. and um and her name's Sarah Simmons she's like one of she's like my little sister for life but um well hello yeah, Sarah we, and the, the yeah, name you know, I, I know they have the they they give the joy jars and oh the joy jars yeah my she, my yeah, son has so. been in and out of chalk hospital and I know all no, about those well, because we got a joy jar I'm sorry no way how mm-hmm. is he doing? Um, he's he's doing really well, you know. Um, this, I, I you know, uh, <laughs> he's got lots of little issues, but he's he's on he's on the road to making a pretty much full recovery. Um, he has a he has a he has a G tube now. Um, and my son is is also autistic. Um, he's he's really high functioning autistic, but you know there are some some major challenges that we face daily because of it. So, but he's doing really, really well. And, you know, thankfully we haven't had any hospital stays since March. So that's really yeah. good. Bobby, what's his name? His name is Jonathan Jasper James. Jonathan, hey Jonathan. <laughs> we Did you just call Jonathan. him John John? No way. No, no, I don't, but you know it's so crazy. It's I thought you did because I'm like, that's what I call him. Oh my god, it's so weird. <laughs> I love it. Like in a good way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, it's crazy. My godparents, their son is John, and they call him John John. That's 
That See? is so weird. That's so I awesome. I, I still love wow. this topic. This is great. <laughs> so yeah, so Little Sarah and she actually, um, we had her to the voice, and um, they had asked me if I wanted to have her on the show, but I was like, you know what, no, like, I don't, that would be, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think she said she would want to, you know, but I just... You know what I mean? It's just like, no, I'm not going to do that to her. Like, you know, I just want her to be able to meet everybody she wants to meet and do whatever she wants. You know? Right, exactly. And, uh, so she got to meet Adam, and then we got to meet her and her grandmother and her mom, who I love, Sandy, so much. Nice. They're like family now. But, um, so, yeah, but Sarah had, little Sarah had, um, she, she had the radiation and chemotherapy, and it was really it was really, really bad, and they were scared she wasn't going to make it. And she pulled through, and right. she's, um, yeah, she's been in remission, I think, now almost three years or three years now. Wow. I think so, yeah. Wow. But um, she looks so incredible, and I'm so proud of her. And, That's great. Um, she actually told me, this breaks my heart every time, but she said, if I make it to Halloween, will you be Gene Simmons with me? And uh, I would try to so hard not to cry. Because we hung out the week I left from the show. We mm-hmm. went to Jesus Simmons' restaurant. Right, Rock and Brew. Which is in Cal- Yeah. <laughs> nice. And um, she said she met him because our name is Simmons. Right, right. And I was like, are you related to Gene Simmons? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not own to a dad. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, but but she, she said she met him and he kept chasing her around the restaurant and, like, touching her head. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> cute. Yeah, I know. And so she was like, we have to go here. And then for Halloween, we dressed up. Um, and, yeah, like Jean Simmons. And oh painted, my my, painted our face. She's going to paint my face. Yeah. She looks way cool. I'll email you the today. Oh, you totally have to. <laughs> and then I'll have to email you my, my daughter's very that's first Halloween. Fun. She was 10 oh months God. old, and I dressed her like Jean Simmons, and I handmade her you costume, and I oh still God. have it. <laughs> it's oh, my God. That's amazing. She said this Yeah, we're, we're going to have – I did, and she won first place in the Halloween costume contest in downtown Huntington Beach. Oh, my God. Oh, it was great. It was great. And, uh, yeah, oh my she, God. she even stuck her that's tongue the out for the photo. Ever. Yeah, it was... If I ever have, whenever I have a kid, I'm going to do that now because of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I I have to. I still have the costume, so I can like show you what I did too to make it okay. look. Because it had to be like baby friendly, right? And the the, the shoulder armor that he had, yeah. I used makeup wedges and I painted them silver. <laughs> I totally did. They had to be soft for her face. So. And I I got her a wig and everything. I painted her face. Like it was great. It was pretty it was pretty awesome. Uh, the following year she was Madonna with the cone. The cone. Yeah. My poor child. <laughs> Oh my God! How old was she when she was Madonna? When she was Madonna, she was not even two. She was a year. She was a year and ten months. And and the, you should see the pose. Oh, it was great. It was great. My my daughter really put up with me a lot. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's good. I'll definitely have to email you the photos because oh my God, yeah, please. it was pretty. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm gonna use that as our picture um, to have people go and check it out. Oh my God! <laughs> that's, that's, that's funny. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get those to you. Let's do it. <laughs> Definitely. Oh my gosh! And okay, so we have not talked about really your new album. I mean, we've kind of mentioned it, but you're releasing a new album in August called Freedom. And yeah. Oh, I love that song, August, by the way. The title track. Oh, thank you so oh, much. Yes, I love it. August 26th is the CD release. Perfect. Yes. And our, um, our, actually, our press, our first, it's going to, our first press release is going to be in New York. I think it's at a place called Rockwood Hall, but um, you guys for sure will see it on my website and Facebook oh, yeah. and all that, all that good social media. 
Oh, I, you know what? I love social media. I think, I think social media. Sometimes our social media person helps me out. <laughs> you, you know, we're not all good at it. I'm um, trust me. Tommy has to help me out with mine all the time because I'm just like I don't. I forget. And you know, frankly, and I'm just going to say it again, and I've said it before, but frankly, they need to come out with an app that you just do it to one and it goes to all of them. You know, at least, oh, at, least at least when you do to Instagram, you can you can upload to Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr. Right. No, you need to have one that just hits them all. Just just all of right. them all at once. You don't have to keep doing it a bunch of different times. And and I'm sorry, but Twitter, y'all need an edit button. There is no edit button on Twitter and that is driving me nuts. Oh my God! They do need an edit button. They do. I know. Or they yeah. Have to on it. <laughs> Sometimes you just delete comments, and I'm like, oh no! Like I want to delete that one. Right, and then you have to go and you have to delete your entire Twitter post and then redo it. Yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's just it's kind of a pain, but I still love you, Twitter. You just need, you just need an edit button. <laughs> Somebody on Twitter I've been look, looking at. Wait a minute. It was really funny. It was like some cat and dog videos. Like, I'm such a loser. Like, I want a dog or a cat so bad mm-hmm. that I've been, like, watching puppy dance videos. <laughs> <laughs> but who is that person? I thought, oh, wait a minute. It's, oh, yeah, The Daily Show. Oh, wait, The Late Show? The Late Late Show. Wait, what's that guy's name? <laughs> um, I know that there's the Jimmy Fallon guy. And then yeah, like, I don't know all the people's the, names. I, I watch Jimmy Fallon. Fair. He's hilarious. Yeah, I love Jimmy Fallon. He's hilarious. But it's a late, late show. Like, I, I don't know. even... He gets in the van with people and sings with them. He's, like, really good at it. Really? Oh, my gosh. That's funny. Yeah. I don't know. I'm such a loser. I go to bed at, like, 930, so I'm never up for the late, late show. Oh, the James Corden. James Corden. Okay. That's his name. He's really funny. I've been, like, reading his stuff a bunch. But, um, yeah, literally. But we've also been, my band and I, when we were on tour, we took random nights and we were, like, exhausted. And we watched all of the um, Will Ferrell, Chris Farley, right. Ted Meadows, like, the best show. Right, That's right. Oh, gosh. So I was like, I just want to watch this all day. So yeah. we've been like, <laughs> what is that thing? I think it's like this skit with Chris Farley and Adam Sandler. And I've actually met Adam Sandler. He's the nicest guy in the mm-hmm. world. But um, but he, it was like a skit with Chris Farley and Adam Sandler, and they were old people. And she was dressed, Chris Farley was dressed like a lady, and uh, Adam Sandler was in the chair. And he was like, all day and night she talks. <laughs> the same as the land, or something like that. <laughs> Oh my it's gosh! So I'm gonna have to funny. look that yeah. up. Please, Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, all day and night people. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm gonna definitely have to look that up because you know so Adam good. Sandler is one of those funny guys that we, uh, my daughter, my my youngest daughter Brianna. Oh my gosh, we sat and we just watched a ton of Adam Sandler movies the other day, and she just so she absolutely adores him and loves him. And I mean, we're huge Adam Sandler fans, and. Um, okay. I have I have that song from the the wedding singer on my I have so many of his songs on my phone. No but, way! But I, I, I hate you, Linda. Oh my God! I hate you, Linda. That is oh. our favorite song to sing. Oh. <laughs> mine's the uh, mine's the uh, sloppy Joe. Oh, sloppy Joe! You have the lady land. Yeah, I have that one too. Lady. Yeah. Uh-huh. Adam, we love you so much. No, it's great. I, I love it. I have not had the opportunity to meet Adam, but one of my one of my girlfriends has been in a couple of his movies and um she you know, she always tells me like he'll send an email and reach out to her and you know, check on her and see how she's doing and you know, she always tells me that he's just such a nice, nice, nice guy. Oh, like, the nicest. Yeah. I, so. I met I met him when I think it was yeah, it was Marty Bowen, the, who invested in the album and stuff, he took me to this thing. Um, it was, it's called the EB Charity Event. They have it every year. Eddie mm-hmm. Vedder and uh, some of the cast from Into the Wild, Catherine Keener, Zach Galifianakis, and um, just a bunch of people. But right. it's one of the saddest diseases in the world. So for sure, always happy to talk about it, to promote it. But it's um, basically it's EB. You need to look it up. It's basically it's it reminds me of Lou Gehrig's disease, but with children and on the outside oh, wow. of their bodies. You know, yeah. it's just 
awful. Um, it's awful. And it most only happens to children, which is the worst thing in the world. Um, so they're basically doing this huge charity event, and Eddie Vedder, who I'm a huge fan of and always have been since mm-hmm. I was, like, 12 years old, mm-hmm. um, I've always, you know, just looked up to him, and he's a big influence in my music, and same with so it's random, though. The other person is uh, Lisa Gerard. She sang for, like, The Gladiator, Man right. on Fire, like, right. film music, because that's another thing I'm doing right now. But, um, but so he's performing, and then um, I think it was Zach Galifianakis did a skit. Adam Sandler was there, Tim Robbins I talked to him. Oh, wow. And this is the first time I met Jimmy Kimmel. And, <laughs> but it was, like, all these people, you know, and... Um, this little kid came up to me, and his his little boy named Eric, and he said, mm-hmm. "Yeah," and like, hey, hey, you know, and right. he was like, "Can I have a picture with you?" And I was like, "You want to me? Why?" It's like, you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think I said why, but I was just like, "You want why?" Like, there's so many other people here. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Oh, I'm just you," and it made me like start crying. Oh, you know, so sweet. sweet. He, he was so sweet. Oh my God, he's the cutest kid. Oh. And Adam Seals was one of the people I talked with, and just so funny. He was making fun of David Spade, like, the whole time. Oh, my gosh, totally. They were cracking on each other so hard. And um, <laughs> I see, I've met David Spade so many times, but I swear to God, I see that man everywhere I go. Like, any time <clears throat> in California, I always see David Spade. Every wow. time. Every wow. single time. That's I'm like, this it. is so weird. I'm like, are you following me? Like, what's great? Like? <laughs> <That's> so weird. <laughs> That's it's so awesome. weird. But it is cool. It's hilarious. But, uh, but yeah, I talked with Adam Hammer, and um, it was like uh, I had I just, we were so standing there, and I was like, great job tonight. That's so funny. And he was like, thank you very much, you know. And um, I was like, I'm so sorry with your arm, because he had his arm in this little thing or whatever. And right. um, he was like, I think he was in South Africa or something like that, like not by a lie. I don't know what it was. Wow. But, like, it was something, and I was like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. And he was like, what's your name? And he's like, oh, my name's Sarah, Sarah Simmons. And he's like, awesome, my name's Adam. And I was like, yeah, Christian, you're awesome. You're right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know who you are, but you're awesome. Yeah. Um, but I had, I was like, I just want to tell you, um, you know, Sloppy Joe is just my favorite skit of all time. And um, and he was like, oh, my God, I haven't thought about that skit in so long. Like, right. I miss it. And I was like, I know. And then I talked with him because the I Am Chris thing was coming out. And I was like, yeah, I saw the I Am Chris thing coming out. And he was like, yeah, that looks, that looks really amazing. And um, he was like, I really miss him a lot for sure. And I was like, I bet you guys do for sure. And, right. Um, and I was like, I just want to say my brother would be so jealous if I was meeting you right now, like that I'm meeting you right now. And he was like, no way, what's his name? And I said, Ballard. And he was like, that's a cool name. And I was like, thanks, you know, right. and um, which was so nice. And um, and he was like, does anybody ever call him Lard? And I was like, yes, all of us. Like, he's not big at all. And I was like, oh, my God. He, I was like, that's what he gets called all the time. And he was like, oh, my God, that's crazy. Because if he was my brother, I'd call him a lard. I'd say, what's up, lard? Yeah, like, right? all the time. Oh, that's and I was awesome. like, that's crazy. That's awesome. And he's just like a jokester at heart. Yeah. Always. Well, and you but, know, um, it was really cool. I'm so jealous of, like, his friendships. And I, I mean that because, you know, he and his group of friends, like, look at all his movies. And, you know, if if – they're all like, they all have like the same people, like, you know, and it's just great. And they all support each other. And, you know, him oh, and, yeah. Spade and Roy That's Schneider and, or Rob Schneider and, um, and you know, so many others. And of course I can't name them all right now, but yeah, uh, they all, yes. And they all stick together yeah, and they just, yeah. they're, you know, there's just so many of them and they all just support each other and stick together. And he utilizes his friends and his movies constantly and it's just so amazing to see and I love that yeah, and it's, it's so unique because yes there are groups of, of friends that have done that in, in movies here and there but not to the extent that Adam has has done movies with all of his friends and I've always right. always yeah, looked up to him for yeah. that even in the Hotel Transylvania right I mean you know, they're all in that one too. Like they're all there. Right? Yeah, that's so true. You know, and so. remember that movie, The Hot Chick? Didn't he like 
directed or something, but he was only played this little part mm-hmm. or something. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's crazy. like it's just so it, it's crazy to me. And then and then in Grandma's Boy, he wasn't in it, but all of his friends were right. And it's just like wow. Right. It's just, in that movie, oh, my gosh, was one of my absolute favorites. And it probably shouldn't so be, funny. but it totally was. It, I, it's hilarious. I couldn't help a lot. Drive, monkey. <laughs> it's, just, it's so stupid and so funny and brings out my inner kid. I don't know. I love, I love it. it. I love it. He's you just, know what's crazy is, like, I actually think, like, for example, like, a lot of people say it's not good to work with your best friends, but I think that's a lie. Because yeah. if you're... Because I'm working with my best friends right now. Like, my band is, right. like, uh, Greg, my fiancé, Clay is, like, my brother for life, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, like, somehow always end up working with the people you love the most, yeah. like, this love to death. Yeah. Because if you can work with your best friend, that what kind of life, like... Such a blessed life. Uh, absolutely, know, and, and and I work with mine yeah. too, so I know exactly what yeah. you're talking you know, about. Working with my, and it's funny because like my fiance, for example, we've been together six years this November. Oh wow! Congratulations. Yeah, we're engaged. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> when are you getting married? Next summer. Next yeah. summer. Oh, that's awesome. Well, because you said Judith Hill was going to be one of your uh, bridesmaids, so I was just... Girl, yeah, Gina Alvarez, too, yes. but Gina. Yes. Yeah. That's that's. But, that's um, but yeah, I'm excited. But, yeah, um, but basically, um, you know, he was a chef in the day, and, um, like, Greg was, my fiancé, he mm-hmm. was a chef of a restaurant, and it's, like, while we were not on tour, and I, like, with this guy named George Reed, and... Um, he worked for him, and it was like, I miss him so much, you right, know? Right, like, We both miss each other like bananas crazy, Aww. and it was like, finally, when we got to work together, we're like, okay, <laughs> you know? Right. You know, and um, some people, I guess, like to have space, but he and I, like, we love, like, it's just a dream working right. with the best friend, you know? Absolutely. It really is. Absolutely. Friend, you can make a work, I mean, what's her name? Pat Benatar, mm-hmm. I think, and her husband. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. They they've been playing together for, for years. She was like, she was in her twenties. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I know. So and they can do it. We can do it. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And you know. Inside. What the thing is, is, you know, I, I, and I talk about this with my best friend too, because we work together and, you know, when you know each other that well, and you know, you know how to feed off of one another and you know how to then when one person may be lacking in one area, you know, you know how to pick it up or, you know, you know, when there's a bad mood and, you know, you know, there's just, you know, each other's quirks and your ins and outs and you know everything about each other. And I just think that, it's a really, 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 really great, great, you know, way to work too, because you never have to wonder, okay, am I going to be working with this person? And if they're in a bad mood or something's going on in their life, am I going to be able to read them and this, and that? you know, with somebody that you're that close to, you already know, you know, and it's, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I love it. I, I definitely yeah. love it. <laughs> So, for sure. Definitely. Well, oh my gosh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. And I know thank I, you for I totally me. kept this you on the phone awesome. for a long time. I know. I know I have. I love it. <laughs> I could talk to you for a long time. Well, good. So I next really time could. we're in Nashville, at the same time, um, we have to like do a Let's coffee date or something. Some. Yes, let's do it. And I'm going to be coming to California soon also. So. Oh, Oh, text yeah, me. This is my like, number. Text me. Okay, I'll text you. Definitely. <laughs> and then that way, yeah, for okay. sure. I, I live in Huntington Beach right now, so. Oh, my God. Next year, Redondo, right? I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty close to there, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, I love Huntington. I lived in Studio City after I lived there for a year and a half. Oh, wow. After the show. So I kind of know my way around there, but not completely. Right. I'm still downtown. I have to get a map. Yeah, I see. Yes. And for, for anything outside of Orange County, I need a map, too. So. Oh, you're near Orange County. Oh, man. I love. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's where my godparents are. I love Orange County. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm. I'm Yep, definitely. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a definite Orange County girl for now. So, awesome. Trying to make my way back to Nashville. You know, well. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. All right. Well, you take care. I can't wait you for your album to me. actually drop. It's going to be great. So August 26th for everybody listening. It's called Freedom. Can they pre-order it now? 
We're going to have that on pre-order soon. Right now what they can get is my Honey, I'm Fine single, the okay. iTunes single, and the music videos online. And then yes. in a couple of days, early July, my second video with West Studio comes out and the single and then you can, pre- and then we're going to have the album on pre-order. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, we will make sure that everybody gets that information. And basically, uh, you are going to end up with an artist page on our site because if anybody searches your name, every single link to every single one of your social medias and your website, everything is going to show up. Um, we're going to. Oh, thank you. We'll, we'll put a link to your great. iTunes up as well, and just. Yeah, I'll even I'll even include your videos on there because I want everybody to be able to actually, you know, get to know you and and really they're just awesome. gonna fall in love with you like like I did season four of The Voice. Oh, so I fell in love with you too. I can't wait to hang oh out. Oh my God, you're great. All right, well let's let's definitely do that. Awesome. You have my number and, um, you know, just man. Good, good things are coming your way, and I can't wait to watch it all happen. I'm so, so super excited for you. I'm so excited, and congratulations on the upcoming wedding. That's great. I love that. Don't forget to thank you, and don't forget to send me the pics. Oh, oh, I'm baby totally. Madonna, I'm, baby I'm totally okay. doing that, right? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Okay. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye, y'all. Bye.